Now, on the Grenfell Tower fire now, because today the London MP David Lammy has called on the Prime Minister to take urgent action to ensure all documents relevant to the Grenfell Tower fire are protected. So we can speak to him now. He's live in Westminster for us. Good afternoon to you, Mr Lammy. Uh, you've made some pretty strong claims this morning that some vital evidence in relation to the fire is being deleted. Uh, what proof of that do you have? Well, look, I was down at Grenfell yesterday. People are very angry. You've got to understand that if you've watched a building burnt down, you know that the cladding has been set on fire. You know that you've reported to the TMO that runs the building on many occasions that you believe there's a fire hazard and you've been badly supported by the local authority, that trust is low. At the same time, there are contractors who dealt with the tower that had the tower on their websites, uh, proudly saying that they had worked on the tower, and over the last 24 hours have taken off their websites the fact that they worked on the tower. The questions that were being raised yesterday is what else have they got rid of? Have they deleted emails? Have they shredded documents? There's a police investigation. The police have powers under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act to go in to seize computers, emails and documents. People want to hear whether that is in fact happening. It's happened in other cases. It happened in the hacking inquiry where the police went into newspaper offices to seize um, computers, to seize documents. Is it going to happen in this case? How big is this criminal investigation that's underway? How big is the team? Is it well resourced? Those are the sorts of questions that people understandably were raising with me when I was down there. But do you have personal evidence that this is happening or is this just something that you've been told about? And if so, what kind of information is being removed? It's not for me to determine what that evidence is, it's for the police. But let me be absolutely clear, people have lost their homes and I have lost a friend. We believe it's a crime what has happened. We have other major events in this country and you get a rolling commentary of what the Met are up to. What are they up to in this case? What is Theresa May asking behind the scenes in terms of these questioning? Have they seized these computers? We know contractors are taking things down from their website. What else are they up to? That's what the public want to hear, and that's certainly what the families want to hear in this circumstance. It's not for me to go and look for the evidence. It's for people who pay their taxes, who rely on the local authority, and rely on the police to do their job. Now, I know you've been personally affected by the fire, as you said yourself, uh, but this is a very strong statement that you've made today. Are you concerned that this is perhaps making things worse? Because tensions are already very high. Why is it making things worse exactly? Why is it making things worse? Well, this worse? is a question I'm asking you. I mean, we've seen the tensions that uh, are around the Grenfell Tower issue, of course, rightly so. But do you feel that this is something that might be making things worse? You will be aware, as a journalist, that there are other major police investigations. Um, let's say the investigations around terrorism. You get a rolling commentary from the police. We know, minimum, that 50-odd people have lost their lives. Why is it not appropriate, given there's a criminal investigation, for the people who have lost loved ones not to hear a little bit more about this criminal investigation? People are suspicious that when it involves the state, when it involves a local authority, when it involves a failed TMO, when it involves contractors, suddenly we all go quiet and we talk about it being a tragedy. They want more than that, actually. They want to know what really is going on. And they expect to hear that from the Prime Minister and others. That and is not me stirring the pot. That is me speaking for some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And we know that there is going to be a public inquiry. That usually takes many, many months. Are you confident that people who are affected will get the answers that they're looking for from that? I hope they'll get the answers. It depends on who leads that public inquiry. It depends on how they engage with families. But what I can tell you, in my experience, it will be years before you really hear anything from a public inquiry. So that's the problem. We also, at the moment, were told that there was a police investigation. We've heard nothing about it since. It's now been five days. Your media lens will turn away from this very shortly. You will turn towards the Queen's speech. Life will move on. That's what will happen. The journalists will move on and many of these issues will not be answered for a significant amount of time. So this is the window to act. 
This is the window to act and to hold people to account in circumstances where the vast majority of people think there's been something that amounted to gross negligence. The Chancellor said today that the cladding was banned. What's your reaction to that? Well, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. You know, um, my friend lived on the 20th floor. This fire, st fire started at 1. At 4 o'clock, she was still alive in her flat. What happened? Why couldn't she get out? Why did the fire spread from one side of the building across the other and, and upwards because of this cladding and because of internal combustion that was clearly going on inside the building as well? These are huge questions given that residents were raising these issues on successive occasions. Not just once, more than, more than once. These are huge issues given the decision was made to clad the building so that people on the other side of it could look at something more presentable. So look, people are furious and so they should be. You would be if you were in these circumstances, housed by the state, expected to be kept safe in your homes, but not kept safe, told to stay in your, stay in your flat and then find yourself burnt to death. If that is not something that demands a proper criminal investigation as well as an inquiry, then I don't know what is. And if it is those two things, then I'm afraid what people want to hear is what is now happening behind the scenes on their behalf. Okay, David Lammy, thanks very much.